I have one short phrase for you today that could well end up being the key to unlocking some of the most fundamental elements of music that we all need to get better at on a daily basis. I'm talking about time, I'm talking about sound, I'm talking about harmony, I'm talking about phrasing, but most importantly, I'm talking about unlocking your ears to become completely free to play whatever you hear. This phrase will be simple and common to some. It will be something that maybe some of you have never heard before. It outlines a 251, one of the most popular cadences in modern music. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Our harmony is moving from D minor here to G7 to C major 7. Our 2, our 5, and our 1. The phrase again. Let me very quickly put it into context with a play along with a backing track so you can hear it in time with the chords going by and the accompaniment of a band. So let's break this phrase down and get into why it's vocabulary like this that continues to help make me a better bass player on a daily basis, regardless of the style of music I'm playing. The 251 isn't exclusive to jazz and working on these kind of linear ideas don't exclude you from improving the way you play the bass. Outlining the harmony, for instance, is a huge part of being able to not just see and understand but hear the bigger picture of harmony as it moves, whether that be simple pop tunes that have just three chords or whether that's slightly denser jazz harmony that have sequences of 251s and many different key changes. And just a quick note before we go on, if you want to take any of the stuff you're seeing in this video any further i have a book it's called jazz vocabulary for electric bass 251 it really goes way deeper into all of the things i'm talking about in this video with tons of exercises ways to drill this information into your playing there are some of these physical copies available i sign them all in fact let's do a unique signing right here in the video this will now become one of one the first person to order it will get this exact copy and let's customize this to really make it unique, to make it one of one. I'm going to put unlock your ears. And there it is. Physical copies are shipping directly from my website. It's all linked below in the description of the video. You can also, of course, get this on Amazon. You can get digital copies at yannickwizdala.com forward slash store right away. And no matter how you get the book, they all come with play alongs and videos. Everything can be accessed inside the front cover of the book. Just follow the links. Now let's break this idea down and let me explain how this one jazz phrase that I think I got from Michael Brecker probably 25 years ago has helped me not just become a better soloist and, and a better jazz musician, but become a better bass player. When we look at the opening line of the phrase, we are very much diatonically in the center of C major. It starts out on the major third and gets all the way up to the natural seventh, to the B natural before we switch into our dominant chord, our G chord. And then we resolve to our C, to our one. So two, then five, and then one. And we're really outlining the harmony here especially on the five. This is the thing I love about this phrase, the thing that stuck with me about this phrase throughout my entire career is that it steps outside slightly, creates this tension with the A flat, with our, with our flat nine on the five chord. And that is the only outside note in the entire phrase. It's A flat. The only note that you have to know outside of C major is A flat. It happens once there. And again here. And everything else is completely diatonic. Again. Again. 
So one of the biggest things I got out of this phrase was a confidence to lean on certain outside notes that I wasn't, as a young musician, used to playing yet. I was really finding my way. I understood I understood what a major scale was. I understood, you know, that a mixolydian was that major scale from the five to the five. And I understood, you know, the, the classic thing you always hear about a 251 and it being D Dorian. These are all C major scales from one note to another, from G to G. That's a mixolydian, and from D to D. That's a D Dorian. And of course, our, our tonic, C to C. Now, this is all well and good. It's, it's all well and good to understand that these are modes, that these are a major scale from one note to another. That's not wrong. That's not inaccurate. But from a performance standpoint, from what I would love to encourage you to be doing on the bandstand, even in your practice routine after a while, once you're used to the sound, is to never be thinking about what any of these notes, scales, chords, or harmony is at all. And to get to the point where it's completely natural to play in any key, and in any chord quality. And the reason I'm kind of speeding through the explanation of the lick is because it's about 1% of what we actually need to do to become natural at speaking the language of music. Whether that's as a bass player in the lower register of the instrument, or whether that's as a soloist in the upper register of the instrument and regardless of what genre you play to me it's all about having a natural ability to play without thinking so as cool as it is to maybe leave this video with that 251 lick in the style of let's say Michael Brecker who I got it from I think he probably got it from someone like Victor Feldman or Sonny Stitt I don't know let's just say that legacy is being passed along through the art of listening and through transcription that's all well and good. You can leave the video right now with that lick, armed with that information, and off you go. You can get some mileage out of it. But to really get any of this vocabulary into your playing, there's really only one thing, I believe, that kind of comes right at the top of the pecking order. It's the number one thing on, on everyone's checklist that should be happening as much as possible, more so than actually spending time with the instrument, and that is listening. To me, there is no way that you will get a natural feel for playing any of this kind of music. Again, regardless of genre, regardless of bass playing, linear ideas, chordal ideas, whatever it is, don't let the 251 bebop sounding line fool you. This is about everything. This is about all music. And the number one thing, I think, at the top of the list, it's the thing that's worked the best for me, is listening and immersing yourself in the sound of this vocabulary. Now, am I about to say don't use books, don't use practice methods, don't use teaching? No, of course not. Contained in my 251 book, for instance, are the drills, the routines, the things to give your practice routine structure to, to build up a foundation of the understanding and the feel, more importantly, of how chords work and where those fit under your fingers. There are definitely a ton of technical things on the checklist that you need to check off if you want to be able to play this stuff. But when you're planting the seed and and when you're trying to develop feel and time and sound and phrasing and all of those essential elements of any performance, regardless of instrument, genre, style, listening is where that comes from. To me, not only is that listening to the, the greats that have come before us in any style of music, but that's also about developing that muscle, that muscle of the ear to listen to those people around you when you find yourself on stage in a live performance with other musicians. How are you going to react when you hear certain things? Now, now, if you've listened a lot to tons of different harmony, and if you've used exercises in books, no matter whose books they are, mine or whoever's, it doesn't matter. If you've done that work and you've balanced out the listening with the technical and the practice and the drilling and the, just the time spent with the instrument, you're going to be able to react really, really quickly when you hear a chord like that. It's like, oh, I, absolutely, immediately, I know that is a, it's a flat nine. <laughs> And that's just one element that we can take out of this one lick. Now, imagine how many millions of licks there are, millions of bass lines, millions of two, three, four note phrases that you could possibly work on. And the more you do and the more you use repetition, repetition, repetition over and over and over again, the more you're going to be able to react instantly to anything that happens around you. For me, a phrase like this is an example, as there are many dozens in this book, of 
phrases that are very common in a certain style, this happens to be jazz, that you can go to and practice and drill and repeat and just grind into your playing. It's the perfect example of a phrase that you can practice over and over and over and over again and try and get it to the point where you're not thinking at all and you don't even have to guide your hands. The hands are just doing the work on their own almost. Then, of course, the next step, we must work on all of this stuff in 12 keys. It's no good just being able to play. And then suddenly, as well, let's see, and I say, okay, play it in B flat, and then you're like, oh no. And then you're like searching for notes and, and, and scuffling around. It needs to be, it needs to be as clean in B flat as it is in C, as it is in, as it is in D, as it is in every key. Now that all takes time. Don't get me wrong, but I will put it to you like this. If you have very limited amounts of time to spend with the instrument, but you have headphones and you have a smartphone that has basically unlimited access to all songs ever, I am going to hazard a guess that you have way more time to work on music. And by work on music, I simply mean listening to it. That's all you have to be doing, but doing it consistently and doing it with the right intent, doing it with the intent of, oh, I'm going to go listen to whoever it is, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, um, Mastodon, or, or, or Stan Getz. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, but you go like, okay, I'm going to listen to Stan Getz right now with the intent of trying to hear every time I hear a 251, every time I hear, every time I hear this root motion. To the point where you will never not be able to hear a 251 root motion as a bass player again. That's the kind of small detail that you can add to your listening process that will enhance your progression as a musician beyond kind of your wildest imagination. And if you are looking for a new practice tool, Jazz Vocabulary for Electric Bass 251 is not a bad place to start. Like I said, it comes with standard bass notation, it comes with bass tab, it comes with play-alongs, and it comes with videos, and it is packed full of ways to help you structure your practice routine and get better, faster, giving you that ultimate confidence when you step on the stage. If there's one thing you take away from this video, I really hope that it is a realization that you can have way more confidence, have a ton more fun playing music, music with just a couple of minor tweaks to your current process. Just do 20 minutes a day. Just do five minutes a day if that's all you've got. Five minutes a day of playing this one line every day. Do it for a week. Do it for two weeks, three weeks. Do it for a month. If you could just do five minutes a day of playing this one line Let's go crazy. Let's say you're going to play this one line in all 12 keys. I'm going to guess that your playing will improve more from that one small consistency element than it has in the last three to six months. So have fun with it. Give me some feedback in the comments. Ask as many questions as you possibly can. I read all comments and I try and get to every single question that gets asked. Have fun practicing. Have fun with your music. I'll see you again soon.